Have you ever come home after a shoot, offload your SD card, open up your footage, and you realize that it doesn't look like what you expected it to be? You try to fix this in post, and the image just starts to fall apart, and you can't make it look good. This is a common mistake that I am guilty of, and once I figured out how to set my weight balance correctly and use it as a creative tool, everything changed in terms of the images I was creating. In this video, I'm gonna to reveal to you the biggest white balance mistake filmmakers are making, how you can fix this, and show you exactly how you can use white balance as a creative tool. But first, let me show you the number one mistake that filmmakers are doing, and that's not even considering that white balance is important. I remember when I started as a videographer, I didn't even consider white balance to be an important setting. I would just set my white balance to auto, and hopefully the camera would figure everything out. But then when I brought this into posts and was working with a dynamic scene, I just realized that my colors were shifting in ways that I didn't really catch on set or that I didn't expect it. I would go into Lumetri Color in Premiere Pro and try to keyframe my white balance in terms of fixing this, but my image would just fall apart and nothing looked right. That's when I realized that setting your white balance and even considering it is one of the best things that you can do for your video project. Once you apply this to your work, you're one step closer to creating better images. Now that you know that setting white balance is important, let's talk about how to set your white balance properly. Once I understood how white balance worked and what it's supposed to be used as a tool, I would set my camera to 5600 Kelvin and use daylight balance sources. I created an image that was very neutral, but I was scared to experiment with different colored lights as well as different white balance settings. I know that this is the fundamentals of white balance and it's a great and amazing practice, but this can hold you back in terms of creativity as well as developing contrast and interest in your images. There are many scenarios and situations where knowing how to set your white balance properly will elevate your images. Here are a few examples on how I I change my white balance settings based on the environment I'm shooting in. In this project, the goal was to achieve a high key commercial look. In these scenarios, I set my camera's white balance to 5600 Kelvin. I also match all my lights to that white balance as well, and this gives me a balanced, neutral looking image. Another example is where the intention for the natural light to appear blue in a scene. In this project, the available lights were LED fixtures and daylight balance. So I set my camera's white balance to 4400 Kelvin to give me a naturally cool and blue look to these lights. In this scene, it is intended to feel warm and inviting. With the use of natural daylight through the windows at 5600 Kelvin, I set my white balance to my camera to 6400 Kelvin, so it naturally pushed the image into a warmer tone. Once I started to get the hang of white balance, I just didn't see it as a technical setting. I changed my mindset and saw it as a creative tool. I remember when I started working with bigger crews and my lighting technician asked me, what temperature do I want my lights at? And I had no idea. I didn't know how the color temperatures of lights mixed with the color temperature of my camera would affect my images. I wasn't comfortable in that space in terms of experimenting, and there was a lot of things that I needed to figure out. I learned that I needed to understand the creative aspect of the project and what it was intended to look like. Once I understood that and looked at it in this perspective, it taught me to be a lot more intentional with my lighting as well as camera setting choices. The biggest question you should ask yourself before you even step on set is what is my film or project supposed to look like? Is it a moody night scene, a high key commercial, or a warm stylized film? Once you know that, you can start to figure out your camera and and lighting temperature in terms of what the image you want to create. Here are a few examples where I ask myself that question and use white balance as well as lighting color temperatures as a creative tool. In this scene, it is intended for our main character to be working at night. Naturally, filmmakers convey that with the use of deep blue moonlight. As we we're shooting during the daytime, the natural light behind the actor is ambience from the sun, and I set my camera's white balance to 3200 Kelvin so that the light would appear blue. I then brought in my lighting fixtures and set them to 2700 Kelvin to appear slightly warm to compensate for my camera's white balance. Contrast is the best way to add interest into a scene. In this shot specifically, I wanted to play with different color temperatures in my lights so there's interest across my image. I set my key source to 5600 Kelvin to imitate the white coming from the window and then put small lights on the shelves at 3200 Kelvin to add some warmth and interest into the background. As I want to keep this as natural looking as possible, I set my camera's white balance matched to my key source at 5600 Kelvin. When a project is to come across as natural as possible, I'm going to use a white balance similar to what my eye sees. These scenes were all shot during daylight and using daylight balance fixtures. And I wanted to feel as natural as possible, so I'm going to match my camera's white balance to my daylight balance fixtures at 5600 Kelvin. The way you make interesting looking images is by developing contrast. Now that contrast isn't just the difference between the lightest and darkest part of your image, but more so the colors as well as different color temperatures you implement with intention. The thing is that all this information is useless because there's one fundamental thing that if you don't fix, all this information doesn't even matter. So watch this video to learn the one thing that you need to know in creating cinematic images.